Hello and welcome to Bad Drinks TV. I'm your host H and if you don't know by now we are going through the essential cocktails according to Embry's Fine Art of Mixing Drinks. This is the book. It was published in 1948. The six drinks are rather important and what we're doing now and today we're going to be doing the sidecar. Now the sidecar evolved actually from something called the brandy cruster. So we're going to do the brandy cruster and the sidecar as well. Notes on ingredients. You're going to need a brandy or a cognac. If you can't afford to get uh, a cognac, then a brandy will do. But save up some money and get a good, decent bottle of cognac, okay? Or try with Armagnac, okay? Both French brandies. You're also going to need like uh, a triple sec, okay? Now you can either go with Grand Marnier Dry Curacao. This is actually really quite fun to play with. So if you can search a bottle, get a bottle. This is rather good stuff. And a good workhorse that I love using the most is Cointreau. And this is going to be rather important, especially when you're doing a sidecar. Okay? But now doing the cruster, you need a few little extra things. You will need a bottle of Maraschino, Angostura bitters, and sugar. This is my two to one raw sugar cane sugar syrup, okay? I've got a TikTok video on how to make this, okay? Or if you're gonna use simple as well, I'll sort of tell you what to do as well, okay? And of course, a lemon. Okay, kinda need it. Fresh would be best. Okay, now on equipment that you're gonna need to make these drinks. First off, glassware. Now. For the brandy cruster, I like a nice flute, uh, a champagne flute, but try and get one, okay, where it goes in. You're gonna understand later on in the video, okay? Uh, a sour's glass, or you can do a coupe as well, or uh, a martini if you want to. The martini is sort of this thing. I prefer a sour's or a coupe if you can, okay? This is gonna be for your sidecar. And then a little bit more on some more equipment. Now. You're gonna need sh uh, granulated sugar, preferably in a little bowl. This will make sense very soon. I also like to get a uh, granulated sugar duster. I would get one of these as well. You can find them easily on Amazon, okay? Uh, it's also on my Pinterest site. You'll see loads of stuff where I find the equipment that I need. All right. And again, a jigger, please, for the love of God, use a jigger this has a one ounce measure two ounce measure ounce and a half measure she's actually lined for you it does its job for you it's great all right and this one has as well three quarters half an ounce or a quarter ounce okay Peter stole this from my mother sorry mom I have told her she's, I don't think she's recognized a juicer a strainer, yes, I have fancy ones. I get these from uh, Bottesi, a great company. They are really good fun. A bar spoon, I use this one, a Bonza or a UK bar spoon because it's a five to six mil measure, okay? Yes, I know this is gonna be shocking to you. I have a fine strainer. Yes, I will fine strain at least one of the drinks today, okay? I don't do it all the time, all right? You also need some tins, all right? Because you told you before, my Boston ones, or Boston shakers, or mixing shakers, or tins, whatever, I like to use all tin, because I want to limit the amount of chance of me breaking glass, because believe me, the person that breaks the most glass in the bar is f***ing me. Really bad. And then, knife is actually rather useful. And if you don't know me, I've got a bit of a thing about Douglas Adams, so that's why I have the the number 42 here on my little tattoos, the answer to the universe and everything in it, and also means you should have a towel. Uh, this is gonna be rather useful, you'll understand when we start doing some dusting, okay? So always have a towel, very useful piece of kit. Also helps wipe down everything, in case you're wondering. And there you go, that's the equipment that you will be needing. Right, here we are, and we're now gonna do what's called a brandy cruster. Now, this is a pain in the ass to make, 
but you're gonna understand why this is pretty amazing. This drink was made in the 1850s by a guy called Joseph Santini in New Orleans. And first off, what we need to do is actually get the glass prepared. So, what I do is this. Find a nice big lemon, have a rough idea. That should be big enough. Then you go through. All right. Oh, get your nice big lemon peel because this is called the cruster. Now, what's also rather interesting about this drink is that according to David Wondrich, one of the great historian for cocktails, is that this is one of the first times the citrus is mixed in a cocktail, okay? So, now you have lemon peel, and here's your, two, your pieces of orange, your lemon, okay? Now, here's what we gotta do. Massage the lemon around the rim of your glass, all right? I know previous episodes have a bit of a problem with the idea of rimming, but believe me, for this drink, you actually do need to do it, all right? Okay, so I love this drink because what you do, so I'll show you again, you just make your way around the rim, okay, with your sugar. You can use uh, that sort of really fine powdered, but just use granulated sugar, I prefer, okay? So as you can see, all right, there we go. A bit more on that side. Little tap, there we go, all right? Then, here it is, okay? Get your lemon, put it in over the top. Okay, see, look at that! It's like a crown, see, for a queen. Kind of like a queen. You will see me in heels one day, don't worry. I promise you, you will see me in heels and I'll have my nails done. But as I'm walking behind the bar, don't use like having my nails done there and telling you right now, wearing f***ing heels at work really f***ing hurts. I've tried it, all right? Even stilettos. Ooh. But look at that, it's like a f***ing crown. It's wonderful. Right, so now we're gonna actually make the stuff that goes into drinks. But that is what it is, that is a cruster. Now you imagine getting this drink 150 years ago, even getting it now, you'd be like, oh my f***ing word, it's like f***. Right, so what we're gonna do now is uh, just go and ooh, open up a nice fresh bottle of cognac. All right. Now I really would suggest save up and get some nice cognac, okay? You can use an Armagnac if you wish, but most of the time I'm gonna do with cognac. So, two ounces, okay, of your uh, cognac, okay? All right, so go there, put that there. Then, with your lemon, just do half an ounce, all right, of fresh lemon juice, okay? I know it's a pain in the ass, but believe me, it's worth it, all right? Okay, now the original recipe does call for about uh, a quarter of an ounce of sugar. Now, if you're doing quarter of an ounce of simple, I'm doing rich, so I'm gonna do literally about, oof, I'd say about five mils or a bar spoon, okay? Because this is a rich syrup. If you're doing simple, do the quarter of an ounce, okay? And then we're gonna do a bar spoon of maraschino, not shino, maraschino, okay. Pull that in. All right. And then I'm gonna use a nice little dry, the dry curacao for this one. You can do with Quantro or the Grand Marnier. But I like using this and just a quarter ounce. Pull that in. I mean, come on, imagine, this guy came up with this 160 years ago. I mean, wow, absolute f***ing legend. And then we need just a dash of Angostura. That's it so far. And that's what you need, okay? So brandy, maschino, lemon, sugar, bitters, okay? and the dry, and dry curacao or contro or whatever, all right? Add ice. Yes, I am gonna fine strain the drink. It's gonna blow your mind. I just don't usually do it, but there you go. And then, give it a good fucking shake.
Just do a little taste test if you want first. Oh, me, that's good. And then, what do I do? And here we go, all right? Right in there. Try and avoid the top. And then I'm just gonna do a little fine strain, okay? I do this because I just like to see the concentration and the look of just slowly building that up and coming all the way up, okay? And there it is. This is a beautiful little brandy cruster. It does look like a wonderful drink. Any little bit you got left, or in the top. And there it is. That is a wonderful brandy cruster. I know it's a pain in the ass to make, but f me, it's good. Right, so here's how you drink it. Really easy. After all that work and effort, yeah, f it. It's going to go in there anyway. Mmm. Mm. Oh, baby. Oh, man, that is so fing good. Right. So here we are now going into uh, the sidecar. So it's a little bit by anal sex. You just gotta fing ease in there first time, okay? So here we go. The sidecar. Now you're seeing where it's evolved from, all right? And it's actually now in a sort of a category of cocktails, which according to uh, Gaz Regan, who unfortunately has passed away, in a book called The Joy of Mixology. No, it is not a sex book. It's actually about cocktails. And he calls these things the New Orleans Sours. So it's things like the Cruster, the Sidecar, the Cosmopolitan, and even the Margarita. Now, the Sidecar, according to Embry, was basically just a glorified version of a daiquiri. And Embry was being a bit of a about that and he also has a ratio which is like uh, equal parts so that would be one cognac one ounce of cognac one ounce of uh, Cointreau and one ounce of lemon juice now that's pretty good for an after dinner if you're going to do it but the way I like to do it is um, basically I do ounce and a half of the cognac three quarters of Cointreau and three quarters of lemon and a little bit of the history about this drink. Um, you want to find out more. In this book, uh, Robert Vermeer's uh, real simple one, Cocktails, How to Make Them, in 1922, he actually credits a guy called Pat McGarry at a bar called the Bucks Club in England. Now, uh, Harry McElhone and his a on his uh, ABC book as well, which was uh, 1918 or 1919, also does Pat McGarry. And they're all saying this is the guy who sort of made this, this drink, the sidecar, when he was over in Europe or in the United Kingdom. Now, however, just to f everything up, a guy called uh, Frank Meyer, who did this book, basically just says, f you all, I made a drink at the Ritz Carlton in Paris because, you know, I'm an elitist, snobby, f***ing arrogant bartender. Shocking, not much changed since then. Um, but I'm just, you make your own mind up, okay? You make your own decisions on what the stories are. I mean, one of the best stories really is about a very eccentric American uh, army officer who during the interwar period, which is uh, 1918 to 1939, unless of course you, you're the United States of America and it's sometime in the 40s. But for everybody else in the world, around 1918 to 1939. And he used to wander around, drive around the city in a motorbike with a sidecar. Okay, and that's how he used to get chauffeured around. He was eccentric, you know. Pretty cool idea. Plus, you freeze your f***ing balls off. I'd rather have a chauffeured limo, but you know, oh, Rolls Royce, obviously. Maybe go to a Bentley. It's a bit lower class, though. Right. So here we go. We're going to make a very simple recipe, and this is where you know, really, really try and get a cognac or a really good Armagnac. All right, it's really important. So here we go. All right. So. Cognac, and this is where you use a measure, ounce and a half. Okay, Ooh. there we go. Okay. Get a good triple sec. I'm going to use Quantro. I think they're wonderful at what they do. You can use Grand Marnier, but I think someone calls that a grand sidecar. Three quarters, Quantro. Right. Okay. And then three quarters of lemon juice. As I said, please use a 
taking measure. All right, I don't know how many times I have to tell you. I know you want to add more, or add less, or whatever. Don't. You will, if you're going to plan on getting drunk, you drink enough of any drink, you will get drunk. All right, but just enjoy and appreciate it. Okay, so here we go. In here right now is our cognac, our lemon, and our Cointreau. But now we need to prepare the glass. As I told you before, I'm not a rimming person. Uh, the whole idea of having a sugar rim on your, uh, your side cart, yes, it can come from the cruster, but the actual mention of it wasn't really until the 1930s. So it's really to rim or not to rim, it's up to you. Uh, I do a compromise, and this is what I do, okay? So you've got your drink prepared here, all right? Get a cloth. Guess, uh, I like to get a duster. This is what it is, okay? and get some granulated sugar, lemon, and then massage again into the glass. But I only do like about a third of the glass, all right? So I try to do a compromise, all right? Yes, I'm compromising. You should be proud of me for that, all right? Okay, do that. And then do a little dusting, all right? Over the top, like so, okay? Dust down, there you go, all right? Nice little dusting on the sides, okay? So it's not the whole one, okay? Try and use a clean cloth as well, you know? All right. Have some lemon peel already. All right, so there you go. There's your glass. There's your mix in here. See, glass is nice, it's nice and fresh and ready. Add ice, give it a little shake again. And yes, I am not fine straining because I tend not to. I think some things you can, some things you don't. Oh yeah, that's look good. And just strain it in. Put a little extra in. That little there, it's like uh, like a sidecar. This is also where the idea where the drink name came from, which is also what Dale Groff thinks. And I actually rather like that idea personally. Lemon oil. Okay. And here we go. So you can either have it without the sugar. Hmm. Rather good. And then you can have it with the sugar. So there you go, see, compromise. Mm. That's a lovely, wonderful drink. Mm. Oh, it's lovely. So enjoy. Now f off and get home safe. Thank you. Is that okay? We good?